This tutorial is about a sort of an explosion, but basically it's about polygon modeling. Very simple and highly effective. So let's start with an object which is pretty simple. You can always use a more complex uh, object, but then the computer will slow down, I guess, because this is quite intense. So um, we can go here and uh, create, for example, a prism pipe a helix okay the helix has lots and lots of faces here let's go here and uh, remove uh, 50 replace actually 50 by say 10 so it's much simpler now and we need to separate them a little bit or reduce them like this uh, we'll make them higher like this so they're nicely separated and actually we can reduce this to five so we have not too many polygons right here right mouse click and assign a new material and as in most cases an Arnold shader which we can make blue so this is a helix we have now we want to separate all the faces here uh, and create new objects from them currently we have one object which is called p polygon helix one and uh, now we want to separate the faces uh, there are several ways to do this basically we need to go to modeling here now uh, right mouse click and you go to vertex the little points which make which which uh, which sort of span uh, the faces here of, of the object we select them all they're not visible here because we're in component mode and component mode is what we find here under edit mesh that's the component section so to say whereas mesh is the object section so with the whole object you do something with the mesh menu whereas when you're in component mode most cases you use the edit mesh menu and we want to detach the points it doesn't really change anything but uh, if we go to say faces now and we pick this face here and we move it up it really disappears but uh, it's still one object here it's still the helix so all the parts are sort of collected in uh, this uh, whole setting so it's one object we want to create several objects of them so the first thing uh, we selected the points and we detach them using the edit menu and detach so the second thing we're going to do is we select the object and now we go to mesh and mesh can separate the individual faces now still it looks pretty much the same but here we have a group now and the group contains lots and lots of polygon f uh, surfaces here and um, in order to make the simulation which is coming up now uh, uh, not too slow let's delete some of the faces that's the one down here so maybe remove those delete this one delete and the very top ones where are they right here we delete those two plus the cap so now we have uh, the remaining objects here uh, we select them all you can select them here as well but uh, I, I prefer selecting them in the outline and now we get, go to special effects that's if x and uh, here we have fields and solvers and under the solvers menu we have the radial uh, option and now the radial field sits in the center of the scene where basically the center of our helix is and uh, when we run the simulation actually before we run the simulation let's extend this length to say 400 frames and right mouse click in the timeline to set the playback speed to play every frame maximum real time okay let's run the simulation now 
Isn't that cool? So they fly apart uh, all, all symmetrically, so to say. Uh, we can do something uh, more exciting now. First of all, we'll select the radial field and we reduce the uh, magnitude to 1. So it's not that strong, it doesn't go that fast, like this slow motion. The attenuation is about how uh, far the, uh, the effect works. So it, uh, it gets weaker the further away the particles are. Um, now uh, I select all the objects again and create a new field, an extra field, so to say, with turbulence. So they're not uh, moving apart from each other so symmetrically. And of course uh, you create collisions between the uh, objects here because um, the tur turbulence field starts to work here. Here are the, the the ones automatically selected which create the collisions, which doesn't help us very much, but we can go to um, the uh, turbulence field here and uh, reduce the magnitude to one as well. So not so many problems will occur, hopefully. You can pick the radial field and uh, animate its magnitude. So at the very beginning we can set a keyframe with the right mouse button and um, let's see the objects move out here. Let's return them now. Let's pick the radial field again and set the magnitude to minus one, which means the field will suck them in. Set a keyframe. So they're coming back now, you see. And the turbulence field and the radial field now interact. So what we can do now is go to the radial field again and say at frame 100 we want this to be zero, meaning nothing really happens anymore. There's only the turbulence field working here and we set the turbulence field to well at beginning to magnitude 3, set a key, then reduce it. I need to select it because of the, all the error messages here. Uh, we reduce it to 1 here, set a keyframe and now we go to 120 for example and set the magnitude of the turbulence to 0 and now the animation goes like this. And we have a smooth interaction now between the objects. They keep their impulse, which they had when the simulation stopped, when the magnitude went to zero. And uh, so this is quite an interesting uh, effect here with just one helix we started off with. And of course I like to render these things. There's a sky dome here I introduced and a little bit of motion blur. And since the particles, the objects here, uh, move very fast at this uh, time in the animation, uh, we have lots of motion blur here. Have a nice day!